Derrick Rose was a player that captivated us for the first four years of his career. His athleticism was unparalleled, he was the first slashing athletic point guard of his kind, and he was the youngest MVP in NBA history. Derrick Rose was so good that he was the sole player that was capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Miami Heat Big 3 and actually was able to compete with them, winning the Eastern Conference number one seed in his third and fourth season until tragedy struck and he went down with an ACL injury. This injury ruined the rest of his career as he was never the same athletic player again. But before Derrick Rose's freak injury, before the Chicago Bulls won the lottery with a 1.7% chance to have the opportunity to draft their hometown hero from Simeon High School, there was another star point guard that was supposed to be the Chicago Bulls franchise cornerstone following the Michael Jordan era, and his name was Jason Williams. No, not white chocolate Jason Williams, we're talking about the Duke superstar Jason Williams, which goes by J to avoid confusion. If you don't believe in yourself, then who's going to believe in you? Jason David J. Williams was born on September 10th, 1981 in Plainfield, New Jersey, where he spent his entire youth and was an absolute beast in high school. The list of accolades seem endless. Not only did he play basketball, but he also participated in junior varsity soccer in his freshman year, and in his senior year, played varsity volleyball. Not to mention he was one of the best chess players in his entire high school. And that's not to mention how incredible he was in basketball. In a time that followed NBA legends like Magic Johnson, John Stockton, and Isaiah Thomas, there was never a point guard prospect that possessed the all-around attributes that Jay Williams did. He was an excellent three-point shooter, a beautiful passer, a tenacious defender, and had an excellent ability to drive to the basket and finish in traffic. In high school, he was given the nickname J-Dubs by his teammates for a reason. I mean, just check his accolades. By his senior year, Jay Williams won the 1999 Morgan Wooden Award, was named a first-team All-State player in New Jersey, the New Jersey Player of the Year, a Parade All-American, a USA Today first-team All-American, and a McDonald's All-American. During the McDonald's All-American game, Williams would go on to drop 20 points on the best high school prospects in the country, all while maintaining a 3.6 GPA to showcase his intelligence and potential as one of the greatest floor generals in basketball. Jay Williams showed early on that he possessed the ability to not only be an all-star, but possibly one of the greatest point guard prospects in the NBA if he continued working on his game and getting better. Better. And by committing to a storied program like Duke University, Jay would have an opportunity to be just that by working with one of the most legendary basketball coaches in the history of the sport, Mike Krzyzewski. As a Duke Blue Devil, Jay Williams would once again prove he is one of the best players in the world. In his freshman year, he would be one of the only freshmen in Duke history to average double-figure numbers despite being one of the secondary options on his team. In his freshman season, Williams would average 14.5 points, 6.5 assists, and 4.2 rebounds, which would still be impressive if he were playing today. If we compare Jay Williams with 2017 number two overall pick Lonzo Ball, you'd see that Lonzo scored 14.6 points, averaged 7.6 assists, and six rebounds. The fact that we can compare Jay Williams, who was a second option during his freshman season, to Lonzo when he carried the UCLA Bruins to the Sweet 16 alone should give you an idea of how incredible Williams was in his freshman year alone. That next year brought one of the greatest Duke team since Christian Leitner's Duke squad. Jay Williams would team up with Carlos Boozer, a dominant player from Juneau, Alaska, and one of the most fearless and tough defenders on Duke University, with Mike Dunleavy, an incredible three-point sniper who would get really hot very quickly. To give you an idea of how great Dunleavy was in college, Dunleavy would average 17.3 points per game and shot a whopping 54% from the three-point line. Shane Battier was also featured as a defensive glue man and another player who had the ability to hit the three, giving a floor general of Jay Williams' caliber 
caliber, that many weapons, and a coach like Coach K was the NCAA's definition of a super team. In his sophomore season, Jay would start all 39 games and lead the Blue Devils to a 29-4 record, giving them the number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Jay would go on to break the record for the most points scored in an entire season that was held by Dick Groats for 49 years and made him the first Duke player since Danny Ferry to lead the league in scoring. This all built up to the greatest game in Jay Williams' NCAA career. And that exemplifies Gary Williams. The crowd on their feet will Williams goes down the lane to lay it in. Duke can no longer stop the clock. 53-5 to go. It's an eight-point lead. They need a miracle. There's one. Williams for three. Now they need two more miracles. Four out of six, but he's an 80% free throw shooter on the year. And misses the first. Exactly. Missed them both. Two high with a rebound. It's a five-point game. Duke has the ball. Do you believe what you're seeing? Oh, it's a three in the two-point game. He is going to stick a dagger in your heart. He has had a horrible night in the first part of this basketball game, but he shows what type of player he is by not quitting. He has hit two of the biggest shots in the game as well. Dixon nearly won. Yeah. It's it Duke basketball. Holy cow, are you Incredible. kidding? That is incredible. Williams lost control. Got it back. Daddy wins. Dunleavy for three. Two more. Tip won't go, but the ball. 21 points. Oh. Nine seconds left. Two ways and missed free throws and three-point shots by Jason Williams. Duke would pull off the biggest miracle basketball has ever seen, winning 98-96 to with Jay Williams having 25 points and Shane Battier having 20. Till this day, people always bring up the miracle minute and the significance to basketball along the phrase of never give up and never quit. After the season, Duke would get the first seed in the NCAA tournament after winning the ACC tournament. Duke would dominate the whole tournament, winning each and every game by 10 plus points. The national championship would pit Jay Williams and the Duke Blue Devils against the Gilbert Arena's led Arizona Wildcats. Jay would end up with 16 points and Mike Dunleavy would lead the way with 21 points and Duke would win another national championship by beating Arizona 82 to 72. Jay would not only win the national championship, but would also win the NAVC player of the year, would be a consensus first team all American and first team all ACC. Jay Williams was unstoppable. In 2002, Jay would have another amazing season, giving him the title of the best college basketball player in the world. He would end up winning the Naismith Award and the Wooden Award alongside College Basketball Player of the Year. Jay Williams would go on to decline his final year of college eligibility to go to the NBA Draft, but Jay would finish his Duke career with 2,079 points, which was tied with fifth place alongside Duke counterparts such as John Shire, Shane Battier, and JJ Redick. Jay's number would be retired at senior day, which is number 22. So you could see that the stage was set. Jay Williams was an absolute basketball phenom. This guy had the hardware, he had the skill, he could do anything that you could possibly ask from your point guard and more. So you might be wondering what happened. Upon declaring for the NBA draft, Jay Williams was viewed by NBA scouts as a transcendent point guard prospect, a player with the ability to score, make the right pass, and demonstrated tremendous leadership during his time at Duke. Williams was seasoned for three years underneath one of the greatest college basketball coaches of all time, and had it not been for Yao Ming, he would have been a lock to be the number one overall pick. Yao Ming was a 7'6 god from China who was unstoppable in the post with his jumper and had a ridiculously high free throw percentage which made him a problem every single time he had the ball in his hand. At the time, the NBA revolved around big men, which would lead to Yao Ming getting picked number one, but that wasn't a problem 
problem because at the time the Chicago Bulls were in the midst of their post Michael Jordan rebuild coming off a 21 and 61 season and at the time boasted a promising young nucleus of Jamal Crawford, Tyson Chandler, Eddie Curry and Marcus Pfizer all of which were players drafted within the past three years. The Chicago Bulls figured to be one floor general and transcendent talent away from completing their rebuild which made the Chicago Bulls and Jason Williams a match made in heaven. Williams was seen as the player who can get the best out of each of his teammates, really help them fulfill their potential, and be the leader that could lead the Chicago Bulls back to the playoffs in future seasons. After being selected number two overall by the Chicago Bulls, Jay Williams demonstrated incredible inconsistency in his rookie season, averaging only 9.5 points per game with 4.7 assists on 39% shooting and a 32% from three. Jay did show some signs of promise on November 2nd, 2000, where he showed out, messed around, and got a triple double with 26 points, 14 rebounds, and 13 assists in his hometown, New Jersey. Unfortunately, that would go on to be the best game of his NBA career. For the rest of the season, Jay would ride the bench, which is fine. We've seen plenty of high draft picks ride the bench as they develop, and his next season could have been a stepping stone for success. But that never happened because tragedy would strike. On June 2003, following his rookie season, Jay Williams faced a catastrophic turn of events. Jay would violate his contract by by riding a motorcycle and would get into a horrific motorcycle accident which was nearly fatal. Upon crashing, Jay would be seen screaming in pure agony that he threw it all away. Jay was lucky to have made it alive. Although he did make it alive, Jay tore nearly every ligament in his knee, including his ACL, and would require physical therapy to regain full usage of his leg. Jay would undergo many surgeries to try to bring his body back into shape, but nothing was ever the same. As bad as his injury was, Jay's mental health would get even worse. As his attempts at therapy would fail, Jay would find himself in a deep depression. One night he almost committed suicide, and here's a quote regarding that night from Jay himself. I remember lying in my bed, I remember lying in my bed, and I'm just tired of being here. I didn't want to be here anymore. I was so afraid to face people and I didn't really know who I was. And I didn't really want anybody to see me. And I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to talk about it. And this is where it gets incredibly graphic. I mean, to the point where I sat there and I had this pair of scissors in my hand and I just kept going at my wrist. I wasn't trying to go sideways. I was going vertical. I didn't want to be here at all and Jay was never the same after that. Through all the problems Jay had faced during the course of his mental health to his physical health, he had one goal in mind and that was to play basketball again. And he was given a shot after years of rehabilitation. He was given an opportunity by the New Jersey Nets to play for them on September 28, 2006. All the looks of a comeback story, correct? Well, like most comeback attempts, this one would fail. He would go on to sign with the New Jersey Nets to play with them briefly, but would be cut shortly after. No other NBA teams were going after Jay, so he tried to go to the D-League to get started once again. He got a deal with the Austin Turos on December 30th, 2006, but once again got injured and was waived a month later, which put Jay Williams on the free agent market with no NBA teams or D-League teams looking to sign him. And after that, Jay would never play in the NBA ever again. Maybe down the line we could potentially see Jay in the Big 3 tournament, but until then you can expect to see him as a college basketball analyst on ESPN. I have to give it to Jay. After all the adversity he faced, he found a reason to stay up and stay positive, and now has a book about it all. His book is called Life is Not an Accident, A Memoir of Reinvention. This book is all about Jay's life experiences, what he could have done better, and everything he had to do to get over his issues. I personally am really crushed by this this because 
I really wish we could have seen him grow into the, the player that he could have become. He was the first player I ever followed as a young kid because I remember every single morning when I would wake up, I would watch Sports Center and there he was, Duke highlights of Jay Williams playing. I really wish we could have seen him develop and see if he could have led the Bulls back to the promised land following the post Michael Jordan era. Who knows? Maybe if he was the player he was destined to become, Eddie Curry and Marcus Pfizer wouldn't have been busts. But unfortunately, this topic in itself would go into the bag and the long list of what if scenarios in the nba and guys if you love the nba be sure to subscribe to this channel and if you enjoy the video be sure to drop a like in addition to that if you have any suggestions as to players you would like to see cover in addition to that if you would like to see me cover any players let me know in the comment section down below i'm gonna be coming out with a lot of nba content this year and i want to execute some of your great ideas because this is our channel not just my channel until next time guys i'm flight mike and i'll catch y'all later